Good morning. I'm Senator Henry Stern, and I'm here reluctantly as the author of two bills that have far too many victims left in their wake. We're here to talk about the dangers that parents and families and kids know all too well online. Whether it comes to the use of social media platforms to to do harm to our students through through the fentanyl crisis or whether it's the impacts of cyberbullying and the lack of accountability for the largest corporations in our planet, we think it's time for a change here in Sacramento. SB 1444, Sammy's Law, will hopefully start to turn the tide and bring some justice to not just the Chapman and Berman family, um, but to so many others who have lost young people. And SB 1504, which would finally put the onus back where it belongs when it comes to cyberbullying, which is on the platforms themselves. I think we're going to be joined here in a minute by uh, my good colleague, Assemblymember Vila, Vila Pudua, as well as uh, Senator Ochoa Bogue. And we have some of uh, our state's leading advocates here on social media safety, on children's and family services, and some of the families themselves. Let me give you a few statistics just to start off. We all know the U.S. Surgeon General just made a, a dire warning that used to be only reserved for, for things like tobacco um, and harmful products to, to kids um, that weren't weren't online, but now he says that social media is sufficiently dangerous for children and adolescents because 95% of teenagers and 40% of children are on social media. That's ages 8 to 12. I have a 1-year-old and a 2-year-old. Um, and I'm very afraid of what the future looks like. The evidence also indicates when it comes to cyberbullying that about 46%, about half of all American teenagers experience cyberbullying. And in those five hours daily, the teenagers are scrolling, doom scrolling, but 70% are more likely to have suicidal yeah, thoughts than those who reported yeah, one hour of daily it. use. 20% of teens have, have noted that they've sent or posted a nude or semi-nude photo online. And one in four young people see illicit drugs advertised for sale on social media. When it comes to hate, Almost two-thirds of U.S. teens have encountered hate speech on social media. So we're hoping now to empower parents, and not just parents, but teachers and the people who look after our kids, to do something about it. With SB 1444, we're going to be trying to empower parents to at least get a red flag when their kids are viewing harmful content online. We worked very hard to ensure that this wouldn't be a, an issue of surveillance or the helicopter parent getting overly involved in what their kids do or in some way limiting their ability to find themselves online. Someone whose little sisters, you know, live journaled when they were in seventh and eighth grade. I didn't quite get it, but it was an outlet and we're not gonna restrict that. But when there are moments for life-saving interventions, parents need to know for the kind of third-party safety apps to work that we're hoping to empower the social media companies need to give them access or just start doing the job themselves and they refuse they still won't disclose to us how their algorithm works how they target teens and youth and you see the results at a bipartisan level Congress is acting and this week, we're gonna be seeing a markup at the Energy and Commerce Committee in the House for a bipartisan effort led by McMorris Rogers and Wasserman Schultz to get some real work done. I think this country actually has an opportunity to come together and I hope we're one small step in that progress. When it comes to SB 1504, 
the Attorney General has already noted the, the scale of this epidemic. Cyberbullying is rampant, and often students have no recourse whatsoever. Of course, you can flag that post and tag it online, and where does it go? When you flag that content, you say, I've been the victim of cyberbullying, off into the ether. You think, is anyone going to respond? And often they just sit idly by. Meanwhile, uh, a teacher has been notified or a school principal is aware and they're powerless to do anything because they can't control what's happening on that platform. Maybe they can control what's happening in class or a parent can help step in. But when it comes to that device, you don't know what's behind that screen. Are they doing their homework? Are they talking to friends? Or is there a predator attacking them? You don't know. So it's time these large corporations who have plenty of resources to do so step up. Law enforcement needs tools to be able to intervene as well. And we hope that this offers that opportunity. I'm honored today to have my colleague, Semen Ravita Pudua, as well as I think Senator Cholbog is going to be making it here shortly. Um, Oh, she is. Thank you, Rosalicia. Um, so I want to offer them an opportunity to make some remarks, and then we'll move on to the rest of the program. Thank you. Um, Carlos, you want to step yeah. up first, if you don't mind? Thank you. First of all, thanks. Thank you for, for having me here. I want to thank the Senator for uh, bringing this serious issue before us. This summer I, I took some, I don't want to say like tours, but it was a undercover tour with Sheriff uh, Cooper. And there were, there were, there were, it was in my district too. When I'm talking about predators that are out there. It is very serious. It's there. People are looking and trying to find out how they can get in and to attack our young ones. As a, I take my hat off as a legislator, put my hat on as a father of four, until you realize what a parent goes through. It's, and a lot of our parents don't realize this because we, we're not paying attention. We're letting our kids get on their iPad, on, on their, on the internet, and we're, we're just assuming that there's no harm. But on the other side of that, there's folks wanting to do harm. And that's what we, we're, I'm so glad that the Senator has brought this bill forward, which I'm a co-author, is because we need to do more in this field. And as a person that gets involved in public safety, you know, when my colleague left the assembly and he says, hey, Cross, you really got to get more involved in public safety. Um, it's not just public safety. It's what our community needs to be aware of. And it just really is giving more awareness to our parents. Like the senator said, giving more awareness to our, our educators that it's out there. And I am a, I'm a proud sponsor of SB 1504. I'm glad the senator is doing something. We need to do more. This is just a start. As you look at, I was mentioning this to, to my staff, that uh, the cyberspace world, if you look at throughout the state and throughout this country, it is the, the top 10 lanes to make sure that we're paying attention to. And this is the start, and we're going to continue to make sure that we got good bills like this, that our state is aware, our parents are, are aware of this, our educators are aware of this, and we want to make sure that we protect our children. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Senator Rose Alicia Chobo. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm just a very, very happy to uh, and proud to co-sponsor SB 14, 1504 with Senator Stern. I think um, with my uh, with my colleagues here um, on this measure. As a mother, as a legislator, as the vice chair for education, as the former 
by share for public safety it's come to my attention quite strongly about the impact that technology has had on our children both on the behavioral health um, aspect of it as far as and as well as the personal health um, uh, safety on there for these for these children so anything that we can do especially in today's climate where our parents are busy on survival mode working two three four jobs it's imperative that we do our part as legislators to ensure that we have safety guards within um, within technology within the internet in order to help assist our parents our educators and our children and bring awareness to the children that it is dangerous out there. What recourse do they have when something hurts our children, um, especially when it comes to the bullying on site? What does that look like? What is the definition of bullying? Awareness is key. And this bill allows us to have those conversations and provide those safeguards to help assist our parents who may not have the time, uh, may not have the expertise, or even the awareness of what to look for. So I thank Senator uh, Stern for taking the lead on this measure. Grateful to be a co-author and uh, urge your support on this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's so good to have a power mom and a power dad up here along my side. Um, you know, we're elected officials, but I think parents are actually the thing that can transcend politics here. Um, just to give a little background before we, we move to our next speaker on SB 1504, um, so you understand the mechanics of the bill, it would require cyberbullying reporting to be prominently shown on a platform. It would require written confirmation of the receipt of any report within 36 hours. It would require a written statement of determination within 10 days of receipt of the report from that social media platform. And it would require any individual that submits a report of cyberbullying to the platform to bring an action to enforce their individual rights. And that last piece is everything. You know, we need not just the Attorney General, but attorneys everywhere to be able to defend parents and families and to go after social media companies that shine them on. Um, with a story of his own um, as a child and family service provider, but also as a someone who's testifying on behalf of one of our lead advocates, a high school freshman who went through her own bout of cyberbullying. Jeff, Jeff Weiner is here. Jeff, welcome. Good morning. I'm Jeff Weiner from Jewish Family and Children's Services in San Francisco. Um, we treat a lot of kids and their parents with some of these cyberbullying issues, and we see families come in our door all the time talking about how fruitless it is to report cyberbullying online. As you heard before, you, you make a report, oftentimes it just disappears into the ether. And if you are lucky enough to actually get a response, which is rare, it's an automated response with no way for you to ask a question or just simply be, be treated like a human being. It's so important that re these reports be dealt with quickly. As you heard, oftentimes they're never dealt with, and if they are, it takes a while. But that's essential that they're dealt with quickly because every additional day that traumatizing material is up online, it increases the risk that some horrible outcome could happen with the kid. We don't think it's asking too much of social media companies just to make sure that their existing processes for handling reports work, that they work timely and effectively. They already say this is what they do. We just want them to follow through on their words. And if this doesn't happen, kids and families should be able to stand up for themselves. Um, and not have to rely on the Attorney General or some other public prosecutor to enforce their rights. That's not the job of the Attorney General. The Attorney General represents millions of families across the state, not individual people. And these families need to be able to um, hold social media companies accountable and stand up for themselves. So really quickly, I want to read um, a really powerful testimony from a young woman named Amelie Sarang, who, who spoke about this bill in Judiciary Committee a few weeks ago. My name is Amelie Sarang. I'm a freshman at Ruth Asawa High School in San Francisco. And as someone who has dealt with being cyberbullied, and as someone who has tried to help many of my friends with cyberbullying, I strongly support SB 1504. In 2021, when I was 11, a group of boys who had known me in elementary school began harassing me through a social media app called Discord. For example, they gave me a name in the server, which was, I need to suck a, I won't say it here, but you know. They also said that no one could ever love me in a romantic way, said that I was weak, 
butt hurt and urged me to commit suicide. They were just picking on every detail they could for a reason purely to harm my self-esteem, which I already pointed out wasn't in a good place. They made fun of my height, and when an older friend of mine joined the server to defend me in a respectful manner, they just went on targeting that person too. It was hard to find where on Discord to report this, and she goes on to talk about how difficult it is to actually make a report. I've also experienced the way these platforms handle reports when I've tried to help others. Take Instagram. Countless times I've heard comments people will make on others' bodies, mental health, or lives in general. When I send these reports for comments like, go kill yourself and stop eating while you're at it, as one example, on no set timetable, I might get a response of, we found the content reported doesn't go against our community guidelines, but thank you for helping to make the Instagram community safe. When of course the content obviously clearly goes against their community guidelines. This bill is just a customer service bill benefiting children. The risk that not having an accessible, timely, and effective cyberbullying reporting process poses is extreme. If I was even, Amelie, she was saying, if I was even in a worse place than I was when I was told to kill myself, I may have listened to them and done it, and that scares me. On behalf of these teens everywhere, please help us. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so you just heard about the the tragedy that wasn't um, somehow avoided through the strength of her character in dealing with them. Now you're going to hear, fortunately, about the tragedies that are never going to be undone and lives that can never be brought back. Sam Chapman, um, I consider a mentor and a hero to families everywhere around this country for standing up for his son, Sammy. And he's here to tell you Sammy's story to hopefully finally get Sammy's law passed, signed, not just here in the state of California, but for this whole country. Sam. My name is Sam Chapman. I'm here in support of SB 1444, Sammy's law, because I'm Sammy's father. We found Sammy dead on the floor three years ago during lockdown. The drug dealer had delivered a lethal dose of fentanyl to our house like a pizza after we were asleep. We reached out on Snapchat using the algorithm and offered our son something for free. Fentanyl is addictive and they do what they can to addict the children, including things like rainbow fentanyl. We have 300 people dying a day from fentanyl poisoning and most of it is delivered online. The social media companies are solving the last mile problem for the drug dealers. And California houses a lot of these social media companies and these gaming companies. And we've invented a lot of these issues. And so we want California to lead the way on internet protection, especially for children. Sammy's law is for the children so that parents can get an alert if something dangerous happens. Third-party safety software would be integrated on any platform, gaming or social media, that had children. These, so these third-party safety software apps are available today. You can download them, but the platforms with our children don't allow for integration. And that's all we're asking for. Allow parents to parent online. Third-party safety software has stopped 17 school shootings has called the police over a thousand times when there was imminent harm and given out millions of warnings to parents on platforms that will allow it. But Snapchat doesn't, and TikTok doesn't, and Meta's instant messaging platforms don't. And Discord, the gaming platform, doesn't allow for it. And that's what Sammy's Law would fix. It would allow the private market to handle this issue for parents who wanted to. No one would have to do anything. The child would be informed that the software was downloaded and it couldn't be used for anything but dangerous activities. Sammy's law does not permit outing of LGBTQ kids. It does not allow for reproductive discussions. That, that is not what this is about. But it will stop sextortion. It will stop firearm sales to minors. It will stop drug dealing to kids. 
It will allow parents to intervene when they're suicide baiting and bullying. All we want is the right to have some visibility into what's happening to our kids online. Snapchat has the snaps disappear. That's why the kids have all collected there and they act with impunity because they feel like they can get away with it, even though they're one screen grab away from immortality. The drug dealers and the pimps have, have collected there as well because they know that our children are there. It's, it's too tempting for them. And the gaming platforms are dangerous as well because they groom your children for weeks, sometimes months, before they set the hook. So Sammy's Law, SB 1444, will solve these issues for parents who want to solve the issues and let us parent again online. Thank you very much. In the name of my son, let's save some lives with this legislation, please. Sammy's Law isn't just Sammy's Law. It's Zachary's Law, too. Zach's dad's here. Chris thought he maybe made the uh, ultimate sacrifice in his life by serving in the United States Air Force and putting his life online to defend our country, but we stole his son from him four years ago. He's brave enough to come back here and tell us that story. So, Chris, thank you for your courage, for being here. Thank you, Senators uh, Henry Stern, Rose Lisa Tovok, everyone for being here. My name is Chris Didier. I'm a um, father of three incredible children. I'm an executive board member for a nonprofit, Victims of Illicit Drugs, and I am Zach's dad. I have a few disclaimers as I start. First of all, for those families who have suffered the loss of their child or a family member or loved one, our hearts go out with you we hope and not our intent to uh, be triggering with what we talk about. Uh, we are all in this together. The second disclaimer is this is hard. This is not easy for us to talk about because this cuts very close to the core, but we've learned a lot and we really believe in what we think should be the correct course of action to make our community safer. As we know, there is an evolving maelstrom in the rise of harms through social media whose purpose is to deceive and deeply impacting mental health. Harms such as fentanyl-related deaths, CSAM, cyberbullying, eating disorders, to name a few. And it's affecting families across our state and across our nation, families like ours. My son, Zach, and his friends went to our local mall in December of 2020 after recent COVID restrictions were lifted it was a place for them to finally be able to publicly socialize. Our mall was full of middle and high school kids. None of us ever anticipated, however, that there were other young people in their 20s whose whole purpose was to deceive, to peddle products that are poisonous and deadly. Zach and his friends were reached by a dealer through Snapchat, and they were sold what they were told was harmless medicine called Percocet to treat from mild to moderate pain, something you could get from a dentist. Instead, they were sold fake pills made of illicit fentanyl, something magnitudes order much more lethal and potent. The next day, I found my son in his bedroom, appearing, not, appearing to be asleep but was not breathing, and he had no chance. Like so many of our youth, Zach was successful in all aspects of academia, athletics, music, community service, he was a bona fide straight A student, active in scouting, and a respected multi sport athlete. Zach loved his family, friends, and life. He was truly a charismatic soul to all, a bright light in our world, one any family would enjoy to have. Only three months after our son died, Zach's mother and I had to open acceptance letters into five UCs, including UCLA. There are malevolent actions from nefarious actors who willingly continue to exploit social media for the purpose to promote growing activity and profit. A new landscape has emerged where there's no chance for our youth to learn life's boundaries and presents a minefield that can cause permanent harm and immediate death. Mamie Till Mobley said it well in 1955 when she was addressing the murder of her 14-year-old son, Emmett. What happens to one of us should be the business of all of us. 
So what needs to happen is that legislators need to work together and act to protect our youth. They must find a way to get past the hubris, the intolerance, the apathy that only promotes indifference. Mark my words, every day there are new constituents standing behind us who want change. Standing beside us are many grieving families who've lost loved ones and want to prevent these kinds of harms. And sitting before us are committee members who not only have an opportunity to make a difference, but a responsibility to make our community safer. The alternative is simply unacceptable. Like many children, our son had more than demonstrated the potential to bring new innovation and progress into the world in a beautiful way. But when you experience your child placed on a gurney and in a body bag in your dining room so you can say your last goodbyes and then the coroner take them away, put them in their van and drive away. And you are standing at the end of your driveway wondering what the heck just happened, knowing they will never return. They will never make a difference in the life of anybody else or themselves. They will never be able to breathe air as nature provided it. They will never come back home and walk their footsteps in your house. Their voice, their music will never echo off the walls. That is pain. And no family deserves that. And it's not just the victims or the parents. It's their siblings, their cousins, their friends, their teammates, their, their scoutmates, their castmates, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, who are deeply and forever impacted. And this needs to stop. Our children are truly our, our national treasures and they must fiercely be protected. So it is paramount that we support measures like SB 1444 and 1504 so that measurable safeguards can give our youth a fighting chance as they learn life's growing boundaries. And it helps parents know what's happening on their child's cyber world to make, help them make smarter choices. We may not know what our future holds, but we know who holds our future. And they deserve our very best. So let's work together to support measures like these that we can all make an indelible impact, save lives, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Thank you for your time. Chris, I just want to, I want to wrap up with just one clarification. You said that Zach won't get to fall through and, and change the world as he was on track to do. And I, I disagree. I think he will. I think Sammy will too. They're not gonna do it in the way you thought they were gonna do it. But they're still going to change this world. And I hate that you're the ones who have to bear that burden. And it is so deeply unjust. But we're going to keep fighting to make sure their lives are lived without them. And that those destinies of change are fulfilled. You know, I went to college at the time of Facebook started. I was a sophomore and a guy named Mark was uh, living down the hall from me. But this is, uh, I had a Facebook, like a physical book, where we'd look at people in our class and circle cute girl that we wanted to meet in you know our philosophy course or try to look up who we just met in a new a new lecture hall and they started uploading those photos online and thought okay and it started as hot or not this kind of you know trite activity for young college students to kind of poke at each other or make other people feel cool I had no idea what was starting there that day down the hall from me it was going to change the whole world. And I just got to say, I mean, I know it's not just Mr. Zuckerberg, but it's somebody I know, somebody I came up with. That apology he made the other day in Congress is not enough. I'm not going to take words and apologies. 
I don't care that they've become the scions of our culture and bedrocks of our economy, supposedly. False words backed without deeds are lies. And these bills are going to put action behind those words. So if those apologies were real, let's follow through. Let's pass SB 1444 and 1504. Let's let this Congress move this legislation through. Let's transcend this partisan divide and this politics of this moment. Thank you again to Senator Ochoa Bogue for standing here with me. This is not her as a Republican or me as a Democrat standing here. This is her as an amazing mom and me as a dad. We're standing here with Chris and Sam not wanting to be in their shoes. How many other parents are out there with their kids on that screen all day? All of you have a duty to step up right now and call your representatives and let them know this is the time. These bills are coming before the Senate Appropriations Committee this coming week. Senator Caballero is a great legislator and the chair of the committee. And she'll be making some very important decisions. We hope that their angels are on our side to compel her and the rest of this legislature to get this done, to get this governor support, and to hopefully bring some light into this darkness. I'm here to answer any questions and really appreciate you all being here. Um, yeah. So, I, I actually, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah uh, well, first of all, my uh, condolences to you too. I'm sorry about your loss, and uh, thank you for uh, as tragic as it is. Thank you for coming and sharing your stories with the press, um, Senator Stern. I, I just want to know uh, SB uh, 1504. Yes. Uh, the research that I've been doing, there has been some uh, maybe some underreported incidents of uh, fight pages on certain. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, good. You're aware of that on these uh, platforms, and just want to know, you know, get your thoughts on those because, um, just to make a long story short, it appears that you know these things start on these social platforms, and these kids get together and they're talking about you know aggression, physical fights. They get to the school sites, someone's filming it, and then the next thing you know, they they're uploading it on you know Snapchat, That's Facebook, right. Instagram, whatever. I just want to know. Does this, uh, this particular bill pertain to incidents like that and, and will it yeah, solve Yeah, and, and just for those who didn't hear, the, he was asking about uh, the fight pages that are emerging. Um, incidentally, there's, there's also pages around sexual content um, of students uh, rating people, using AI to generate uh, nude images. Uh, it covers all of that behavior so long as the report is made of that cyberbullying, um, the platforms would now, under these this new law, be obligated to respond. Right now, you could have, I mean, they're proliferating everywhere. Kid down the street from me at a local high school, a few years back, they called it the Knockout Club, walked up to him out of, out of the blue, walking down the street, three kids, one's with the camera, right? One's got their phone on cold cocked him, not just knocked him out, but uh, paralyzed him and put him into a life of trauma that he can never recover from. Um, he's now uh, on a mission too, along with these other families. Uh, but that kind of bullying, uh, we'd nip it in the bud before it starts. When those fight pages emerge, anyone who's observing it could report that to the platform and then they'd have to respond within a matter of days and, 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 and actually hours. Um, so yeah, that is, the, that is the design. And look, you can say the violence is just online and they're just to be observed, but we know it pours out off, off that screen into the classroom. We've seen an uptick in teen violence in real time. Uh, that's an epidemic that in some ways dwarfs what we even faced through COVID and all the rest, um, because it's person to person and it's destroying our moral fabric so yeah thank you for that question i hope that helps clarify. yes it does and yeah. uh would would there be some type of penalty you know to certain uh, online companies you know yes. such as that yeah so uh not just the attorney general but parents would actually parents and families would have recourse uh to go and sue those companies if they weren't uh responding 
to those incidents. So if there were no response, there'd be a, they call a private right of action as well as the Attorney General's powers to prosecute that. We think that that's enough of a hammer to get the social media companies to actually, um, you know, get up from behind their billions and do something about it, but we'll see. And, and my, you know, my last follow-up question, yes, uh, educational-wise, you know, the schools, you know, uh, what would be their role in this to try to prevent these types of happening, even with the things that's happening yeah. with Zachary and so, Sam? So it's a great question. The question was about how schools can be empowered or educators. Um, we've actually we've got support from from teachers and administrators throughout the state of California on this legislation, specifically because we've handcuffed our principals, our teachers uh, in the classroom when they're seeing these things happen and they're aware of the cyberbullying occurring kind of right behind that screen, right? It may look all calm, but they know those attacks are being made, but the reports are falling on deaf ears. And so now it's not just the parents who could make the report and have recourse, but a teacher could, a principal could, you know, a coach could. Um, yeah, so finally get those those handcuffs off our the people caring for our kids and, and, and empower them again. So yeah, thank you for that question. Any others? I think just as a parent, just, I know you already spoke, but as a parent, it, is it just uh, infuriating to deal with these social media companies and see that they're not open to these ideas? I mean, maybe I'm a, a Luddite as a parent. Um, I, I hope my kids never touch social media at all. I don't want to see it in any school. We don't look at screens. Um, look, two and a half year old daughter, right? A one year old son. This, there's no FOMO yet. They don't feel the, 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 the absence of being a kid who's not online when they're in seventh, eighth grade, and kids are kind of defining their identities by how many likes they get. Um, but I will tell you, um, yeah, I'm pissed off. Um, I'm outraged, and uh, that's why we're going hard here. And this is not time to just sit back and kind of let the free market play its way out. We didn't do that with cars when there weren't seatbelts. We said, put a seatbelt in your car, it's killing people. Well platforms are killing people too as time we had a little seat belt and some recourse for for parents everywhere so i hope there's a future where my son and daughter don't have to face any of these ills that's why i'm i'm hustling to fix this by the time they're of age um we want a world without these harms thank you thank you yes in regard to sp yes sir Yep. Are there any considerations of Section 30 and how there may be restrictions of, um, yeah, platforms being unable to regulate? Yeah, and yes, uh, the question was about Section 230, um, federal communications law, mm -hmm. and, and basically the, the back door that social media platforms have to say that they're, they're not liable for the content posted online. We're not trying to say that. Um, they would have a uh, proactive duty to restrict what kids can post online or even taking responsibility necessarily for the consequence of those actions. It's merely just to respond, right? The obligation is just to say that we have received your complaint and that we are responding to it uh, and that they couldn't just go into the black hole like it does now. So um, it's less putting uh, we think we're avoiding us any Section 230 preemption by that sort of strict and narrow application of, of our legislation. Um, and, you know, this is going to the Supreme Court now, too, in terms of the scope of 230 and what, what they're actually obligated for and what a first, where a First Amendment right uh, ends and begins. But in this case, this doesn't actually have to do with the content of the speech or any restriction of that speech. It's merely uh, when that button is clicked that it's not just... Uh, you know, a fake button that says report and it goes into the ether. So we hope that those are uh, enough to prevail in court should they be brazen enough to, to sue over this. Thank you. Any others? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you to my guests. Um, let's go. Get this done. Thank you all.